friends, welcome to Programming With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and we are in the midst of making an amazing Mario game in Scratch. If this is the first time of the video, I suggest you go back and get all of your programming so you can make your Mario run and jump, and get your Goomba in there and get all of these counters working and ready. Today we are actually going to add scrolling. Right now our game is pretty static if you look at it. We can move around, we can get some coins, we can hop on Goombas, but that's about all we can do. And usually Mario games have a little bit more to them. Usually this scrolls on over. So we are gonna add that today. Now your first inclination might be to say, oh, Dr. Erica, let's go to backdrops and let's plan to make it move. So when it's clicked, let's move. But if you go into backdrops, there's no motion blocks for these backdrops. So we can't make our backdrops move, but what we can do is add a sprite that looks just like a backdrop. So that is what we are gonna do today. So you go to your choose a sprite down in this lower right hand corner and we will upload a new sprite. And if you've been going along with us and you're a patron of ours at patreon.com slash rosy research, you have all of these files with you. And you can choose if you like the little brighter or a little darker, it doesn't really matter. You'll notice we have three backdrops. So just choose one that you like. Maybe I wanna start with just walking. And so that is gonna be my first backdrop. Go into your costume and make sure that it's sized so it covers the whole screen. All right, that's pretty important. Just like that. All right. Oh. And then, let's see, it's not showing us the bottom part, but in our code, we will tell it to go to a certain spot. So when this is clicked, we want to go to a certain spot and that will just set our backdrop up the way we want to. And we want it to center on this. So we can actually go to X is zero and Y is zero. I'm gonna zoom in on this code a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. So we go for X is zero and Y is zero. And now when I start my program, this is great, but I just lost all of my other stuff. We are going to need to go to that back layer. So let's change our looks and let's move ourselves to that back layer. So instead of go to front layer, let's go to the back layer. And now I have all of my friends again, which is great. You'll notice I, still, I can still walk on this green because I'm still touching it. You might find that maybe you need to recheck your green color. And just as a reminder, you'd go into your Mario and you'd say, here's our, where we're touching the green. And you could pick this sort of darker green if it's not working well for you. But this is working great for me. Looks like maybe, oh, there's my coin. I'm gonna need to move my Goomba down a little bit, but we can deal with him later. Let's get this backdrop moving first. I think that's gonna be really important. So how do we make this backdrop move? Well, we just need to change the X of this backdrop by a certain increment on and on and on. So we can do that for on and on and on in a forever loop and we can change our X. So in our motion, we can go to change X by. And if I just say like change X by, let's say minus five and we hit go, we can sort of watch it scroll by me. Woo, that is scrolling really fast. Maybe I don't want minus five. If we want to be able to edit this really easily, what we wanna do is make a variable. Cause this scroll rate, if we want everything to scroll together is gonna to show up a lot of places. So let's make a new variable for all of our sprites called scroll rate. And for good coding practice, we're gonna set our scroll rate up here. Now this is actually where I'm gonna set it to minus five, but I think minus five was maybe a little bit too fast. Maybe I'll try minus two. And here, instead of changing X by minus five, I will change it by that scroll rate. We can uncheck that variable, we don't really need to see that. So now when I go, it's coming on, ooh, that's a much better, much better speed for me. I can still do all these things. I can still die. But it looks a little weird when this thing is scrolling and it just sort of like comes up on this. We kind of want the whole game to scroll back with us. and. I can't quite do that with just one thing, but what I could do is I could upload another sprite or I could just duplicate this one. So I'm gonna actually call this backdrop A, and then I can duplicate this and I'll have a backdrop B. And that will help me know 
which one is going to start. A is going to start all the time. When I hit go, though, you'll notice that, wait, Dr. Erica, this is the exact same thing. And let me pause. I'm going to take these sounds off for a moment. Um, you might say, Dr. Erica, this is the exact same thing. There's nothing new here. And you would be right. There is nothing new here. What we're going to do is go into your backdrop B, and instead of going to X is zero, Y is zero, we're going to actually shift it by a bunch. We're going to have it go to like X is 460, let's say. That will put it all the way over here so you almost have like sort of this extra scroll tape all the way to the right. And now when we scroll, it seems like this is doing pretty good, right? So now we've got the second backdrop that came in here, Ooh, but now we're coming to this end. Hopefully we don't end in a spot we would die over here. We can deal with that part later. Let's say we want to also scroll through a few different scenes. So in fact, we can upload other costumes here and we'll have to resize these other costumes as well. So you'll highlight them while you have this arrow and make them as big as they go, just like that. And let's say you want a finishing scene as well. And here I have the castle over here. We can go with this castle guy if we want a castle to finish with. Backdrop B, we probably want the same things. Um, so we can re-upload those, or if you want to, you could throw this away. And after you've added them all to A, you could duplicate A and make that one little change of X is at 460. All right, but now I don't actually, there's nowhere where I change the look of this, right? And there's actually nowhere where I reset A to the other side of B to make my ticker tape sort of longer. Right now I just have these two windows and I probably don't want to just keep adding windows for however long I need to go. But what I could do is I could, inside this forever loop, I could check to see where that's at and then I could change the costume based on that. So let's actually, for looks, let's go to switch costume to backdrop one. And if I go look at my costumes, that would be switching to this. That means I'll always start looking like this. And then I'm gonna set my scroll rate to minus two, that looks great. And we'll change our X by scroll rate and I'm gonna check something now. And I wanna know if something is true. If this backdrop A is all the way to the left, then I wanna do something different. So I'm gonna get an if then out. And I'm gonna check for if something is true. And I'm gonna check to see what that X position is. So I'll pull out my operator of less than, go into motion, and I will check to see if my X position is less than negative 460. That means it's all the way off that screen. And if it's less than negative 460, I'm gonna actually have it swoop back around to the other side. So I'm going to have it go to a new position, and that's gonna be 460, and the Y is zero, I don't want it to go up or down. And then I'm gonna to switch to maybe my next costume, maybe I say, ah, I just wanna to go to a certain backdrop. It's sort of up to you. We're gonna have it just go to the backdrop three for us. And then I can put that in here, and we can see how this will shift things. So we have, Here's our first scene leaving. You can see a tiny little glitch right there. Here's our second one coming up. And there is, then we're gonna have a third one, which is the same one that we just did. Beautiful. So we went through a couple of these. I don't like that there's two castles going on. So I'm gonna go into my backdrop B, which is my second backdrop. And I want it to always start with this backdrop two. If I look at my costumes, that's the backdrop that sort of has this jump in it. I think that'll be fun to have a jump in it. And you can obviously edit these however you would like to edit them. So we're gonna always start with backdrop two, so I'll have sort of a long, flat, the way that this is gonna go is I'm gonna first see this scene, which will scroll into this scene, which will scroll into this last scene. And I am seeing that happening right now. So that is just what I want. But you'll notice when I do this, Mario just sort of sits on the ground and that doesn't quite feel right. I think if it's, if, if we're sort of moving around like this, 
Mario needs to move with it. And this question box needs to move with it too. Although I am noticing Mario's having a hard time seeing that green color. So I'm gonna go over into my costumes and for each of these, I'm gonna choose a color of green right in here. And I'm just gonna put a straight bar of green on it. And that's just gonna help Mario see it. And I wanna help Mario see it as good as I can. So we'll just add kind of a little layer right here. And you can control or command copy that. And you can put that into your next one and your last one and then we can go in and alter them as we need to. Just like that. And that will allow our Mario to walk really well here. I actually don't want it to be quite so green across that. So I could delete this and then maybe make a box that is going to be the color of my sky right there. And that's a quick way that you can edit these things to make them your own. All right, there we go. So now I've got a little bit better green that Mario can stand on. And if I go over into Mario and in the code, let's double check that this is grabbing the right green. So let's go here and we'll grab that green right there. And now it's just a little bit of a thicker line. You'll notice I still need to do this in my other part. So we can do that over here. We can change our costumes and we can pick that green just like this. So we'll go into our fill, we'll pick this green right there and we will make ourselves a little bit of a little rectangle right here. It's not gonna match up perfectly, but these are things that we can start with the first go and then edit as we go. That's always sort of the best way to program is see if you can get something that's working and then alter it a little bit. All right, and I don't even think I'm gonna need this part here, but just in case we do, we'll add a little rectangle in there. All right, so now when I run this, now that green is always there, which is good. I've got this nice thick layer for Mario. He won't just fall through. But we still have this problem that Mario really should, if he stands still, he really shouldn't be walking. That's kind of weird, right? Normally, when the world passes me by, I have to use my feet to do that. So we're gonna change that for Mario. So the way that we can do that is let's go into our code for Mario. So here's his costumes. We'll go over into the code and we need to also change his X by scroll rate forever. So inside this big forever loop, this one where we did the right and the left arrows, the space bar, where we're doing all this stuff to sort of control Mario, we're gonna also control him to move to the left by that scroll rate. So just like before, we're gonna change the X so we can go at the very top of your forever loop, outside of all of those if loops. And this is what's gonna be great about having that variable of scroll rate, is I can come over here and drop in the scroll rate. Now if I decide I wanna scroll faster, I can just come down over here into here and change the scroll rate, and it's gonna change it both for my background and for my Mario. So that's pretty important. It makes it really easy. You don't have to sort of search through your code every time you wanna make a change. So let's see what this looks like. Now if I'm moving, oh yeah, look at that. He stops and he goes right along with it. So that's just what I want for that. You'll also, though, if you remember Mario, if he goes off the screen, he's really not happy. So here I can actually go off the screen and I should be dead right there. That really doesn't work in the real Mario game. You have to continue forward. So we're gonna program in um, that to his program as well while we're over in Mario. Now, if we scroll down to sort of the bottom, we already have a check for if Mario has fallen off the ground and that we should kill him. So what we could do is we can also, while we check for if he's too low, we can check if he's also too far left. So grab your Y position is less than minus 150, pull that out, and we're gonna grab an OR operator, and the Y position will go on one side of our OR operator, and the other side is what we're gonna use to check our X position. And we're gonna use a less than also, and if our X position is less than a certain number, we can look at where Mario is at right now. He's at negative 243. I probably want it to happen a little bit before that, so we could check at maybe negative 240. 
and we'll pull out our X position from motion. So motion always checks that X and Y position of your sprites, which is great. You can plot that in. And so now I have a little bit better code here. So now if my Y position is too low or my X position is too far to the left, we're gonna broadcast this game over. And we can check that and there goes Mario. He's very sad. So anytime that Mario goes a little bit too far to the side, he comes off. Beautiful. Kind of thinking I might want my scroll rate to be maybe minus one here. Maybe we'll scroll a little bit more slowly. And what's great is, again, this changes it not only for the scene going by, but also for Mario. So the other thing we need to change the scroll rate of is that pesky question block. I mean, that should not be floating in the air the way it is. So we're gonna go over to our question block code, and I encourage you to hit pause right now and see if you can figure out what code you need to add to make that guy scroll with it as well. All right, and then let's do this together. So if you pause, you can check to see if you did the same thing that I did. And if you didn't and it works, then go for it. There's so many ways to program. There's nothing that's right or wrong. So I'm gonna use a forever loop because I'm going to forever scroll this little guy and forever I'm going to change its X position by that scroll rate. So I'm gonna come over into my variables and pull out my scroll rate and forever I'll change my X position by the scroll rate. And we can see how that goes. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I like that, but it does get stuck at that edge. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with Mario. We're gonna grab an if loop and we're gonna check to see where that X position is. And if it's less than a certain thing, we're gonna make it go away. So here is my less than from my operators. I can say if it's less than 240, or right now it's at 240, so maybe we'll say less than 239, just to make sure that it is gonna trigger into that event. And we wanna check that for our X position. Here's our X position. So now it's gonna check to see, is the X position at negative 239 or less? And if so, what should I do? And what it should do is we want it to hide. And of course, if we're gonna hide it down here, we definitely need to show it at the very beginning. All right, so let's see now what happens as that question block goes away. It goes off the screen just like we would hope it does. So there is one other item, which is our Goomba, who is not scrolling with us. And we are gonna do that in another video because the Goomba is gliding back and forth and it's not as easy to make it scroll as just changing the X by scroll rate. So in the next video, we're gonna add some blocks and show you how to bound your Goomba and make it so that he sort of bumps into the blocks and goes the other direction. Thank you so much for joining us in this project. It's been a ton of fun. We are also gonna be adding an end screen to this and we'll also do a video about some common bugs that we found that you can debug after, which is always stuff you only learn after you finish a project. All right, we'll see you soon. Have a great one, friends.